Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the next in our new series of classic scores to classic films. And today we're going to be having a listen and a look at Arthur Honegger's Les Miserables from 1934, a very, very early score to a tremendously long and involved film, because if you know the story, and I'm not talking about that Euro trash musical of the same title, I mean the novel, all seven billion pages of it. It's a big, complicated thing. And Honegger wrote a great deal of music for it, actually. I mean, the whole thing here lasts playing time. It's about an hour, 59 minutes. Of course, the movie was like much longer than that, but not all of it required music. Honegger was a fabulous film composer. He wrote the music to about 40 films. Some of the suites are available separately, and they're well worth listening to. He was a good film composer for a lot of reasons. First of all, he was interested in unusual instrumental combinations, which means that he could make a, an atmospheric effect right away with not a vast ensemble, which was good for expenses, you know, if you're trying to keep him down. He was also a natural polyphonist, which means that he had sort of fascinating instrumental textures and interweaving of melodic lines, but he wasn't really a tunesmith in that sense. So his music works very well if you want to pay attention to it because it has, it has interest texturally, but he's not detracting from what's happening on the screen. You can, you can ignore it if you have to, although like all the great film composers, it is amazing the quality of the music he wrote, knowing perfectly well that most of it wasn't going to be audible at all. I mean, he, he scored Les Miserables for a fairly good-sized ensemble, which he very seldom uses altogether, but it has no double basses. I think that's a fascinating fact, and the reason I do is because in 1934, a film soundtrack, I think double basses would have been, first of all, very hard for the microphones to pick up, and second of all, they just are sort of woolly sounding and they swallow a lot of other timbres. But he does use a piano, and often in the lower register, and the lower register of the piano is going to be a lot more effective in bringing out bass lines than a bunch of double basses would have been, especially in a 1934 film soundtrack. I mean, it's really a work of genius, the way that Honegger conceptualized the whole thing. Now, I want to play you a couple examples so you just get a sense of what it sounds like, and then I'll turn you loose and you can hear it on your own. Um, let's see, this is the Slovak Radio Symphony Orchestra on Marco Polo or Naxos now, actually, originally Marco Polo, conducted, as a couple in these series have been so far, by Adriano, quite effectively. He did a lot of work putting this together because he was a passionate believer in Honegger's genius. And unlike the American Hollywood composers who've had a huge renaissance in recent decades, the, the European film composers, the great ones, especially from this period, the classic years of cinema, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, they haven't received similar treatment. So this meant a lot to the conductor, and it should mean a lot to us, because it is an amazing work. It's, it's great music, no matter what. I mean, Honegger was a fabulous composer, and this is really one of his best scores in many, many respects. So let's listening to the, listen to the opening credits. It's not really, uh, it's, it's, it's a piece of the opening credits. I'm not playing you the whole thing. It's that dogged march, you know, like, you know, the, the kid up on the guy's shoulder and they're all marching around, these miserable people for the barricades are going up in Paris. And, you know, it's that kind of music. It's wonderfully dark and grim. It has that grimy industrial or proto-industrial revolution grimness that's just fantastic. It's populist, but it's never... Never cheap or tacky because Honegger was too harmonically interesting for that. And I think you'll agree when you hear it. So let's give it a listen.
Now, of course, the, the, the movie involves the fortunes of a whole pile of disparate people, but the most, the most famous one and the one whose story kind of winds through the whole crazy, crazy bunch of scenarios like a thread is, is Jean Valjean, who is, you know, the, the recently released prisoner who was locked up for five years for stealing a loaf of bread to steal, to, to feed his sister's starving children. And that five years turned into 20 years because he tried to escape and he got into fights and he had all kinds of issues. And his sentence was extended. But he's, he's a good man. And, you know, the whole story of Les Miserables is, is darkness and evil turning to good. It's a story of redemption. And he is the primary redemptee. And this is, this is a track that's called Jean Valjean sur la route, On the Road. It's the music that introduces us to him. And I think this is a, a marvelously sympathetic portrait that, again, Honegger manages to achieve with, without resorting to sentimental romantic, romanticism, that kind of sappy Hollywood-esque kind of melody. It's not. He's writing his own brand of that sort of bittersweet lyricism that he was an absolute master of. And so here is this little portrait of Jean Valjean. I find this incredibly moving and beautiful music. Wonderfully memorable, isn't it? And perfect, I would think, for a film, for, for what it's supposed to do. That was Honegger's particular genius. And of course, this being a movie, there's music that's required for all kinds of things and for all the different characters and their stations in life. And one of them is a sort of country pastoral party, you know, scene, um, which is supposed to be music happening in the theater, that is on the screen. And you don't really hear it very much, apparently, according to the notes here. But it's a lovely little little set piece, a little bit of, of sort of faux countryfied music for a limited number of strings and brass. And it's just delicious, absolutely delicious. It's the track called Musique Chez Gilles Normand. And here it is.
charmant, n'est-ce pas? It's just delightful. And it shows you something of the range that Honegger was able to achieve in this, in this particular score. I mean, it just has a huge, huge range of situations and circumstances and personalities. And all of that is reflected in the music. And there are 17 tracks, as I said, lasting about an hour. So I strongly recommend that you rush off and get the score by Honegger to Les Miserables. It's just, it makes very, very good listening all by itself. Most of the tracks have a beginning, a middle, and an end. They don't just like stop in the middle of nothing. They feel reasonably satisfying on their own terms. And they're recognizably the work of Honegger. If you know Honegger's music, or Honegger, if you want to call him that, but if you know his music at all, then you're going to recognize the composer of this. And that's one of the most marvelous things about it, because he had that kind of a identifiable style. And I think the scoring is, is quite marvelous. The things he does with the instruments he has is absolutely fabulous. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the movie Les Miserables. Take care. <laughs>